Hey, it's Raven here. So we're going to talk about uh, an incident, and I don't want to pronounce their names, and I don't want to try to use their last names, but it's like, everybody's seen it. It's the St. Louis couple that live in the gated community. Um, everybody's seen them. They call them the Ken and Karen of self-defense. They are the two lawyers who have their McMansion, a beautifully big house in a gated community, who happen to be eating dinner. Grilling out, eating dinner, having a good time, minding their own business, right? In walks the mob who break down the gate to protest the mayor who lives a couple, you know, a couple of houses down the road, right? Who also lives in this community. Well, they kick this gate in, they damage the gate, they're protesting, their numbers are estimated between 100 and 500 people. That's a large force of people. All of them are upset, all of them are mad, you know, are some of them peaceful protesters? I'd imagine the majority were with the original intent to be peaceful, right? I'm all supportive of a peaceful protest. However, that doesn't give you the right to trespass onto someone's private property. It doesn't give you the right to go kick and destroy a gate. So that the minute you destroy a gate and trespass on private property is the minute you're no longer peaceful. Now this couple saw what was coming. They, according to them, have spent a long time building their home. And they wanted to defend their home. The um, gentleman went and grabbed his, uh, I believe it's an A2, and, and well, excuse me, it's just a military term, but an AR-15 A2 was like the style that the military used to use before they used up. She grabbed a Jamek or whatever, Jamek little handgun, little subcount pack. It's what they had, right? These people didn't come out in full tactical gear. They didn't come out wearing mag, chip mag holders, mag vests. They didn't have the chest plate. They didn't have, you know, knee pads and a Kevlar helmet and all this. They did not come out like that. They are the representation of, I would say, 90% of gun owners. That 90% of gun owners, this is who you are. And it's not to be insulting. This isn't to be insulting at all. But buying a gun, just buying a gun isn't enough. And it shows. Do I support the two? Absolutely right. I support them 100%. They had, and you know why I support them even more? They had the balls. And I'm going to say the word balls because they had the balls and the stones to walk outside and face an overwhelmingly odds crowd and stand their ground. They did. They were... There was guns pointed back at them. There's video and clips, and because so many of their side was showing, you know, recording with their cameras and whatnot. Well, guess what? They managed to capture some people in that crowd with guns. Um, hopefully this still continues. I lost power on this. But uh, some of the things that they've shown were the crowd had guns, the crowd had weapons. And it's unfortunate that they did. Um... But, you know, everybody gets mad. I've seen him come across a couple different ways. People are upset that the couple pointed guns at the crowd and said, oh, they're the agitators. I'm like, no, 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 no. You're not an agitator <laughs> when someone kicks in your door. You're not an agitator because you are arming yourself when someone kicks your door in. You're defending. Now, were they ready to shoot? Absolutely, I think they were. I don't think they wanted to shoot. Obviously, they didn't shoot. But I think they were prepared to shoot. I think they were getting ready to shoot. Um, I also think there was a bunch of things like that going on in their heads. They were scared. They were frightened. You know, They're resorting back down to the level of training that they had. Because they were kind of in a very heightened state of alertness. They were in a, basically what we would call seeing red or seeing black. They were still controlling themselves and doing a good job. What they had, you know, the lack of actual training shows. Now, the crowd didn't burn their house down. The crowd didn't destroy them, didn't kill them, didn't beat them, didn't try to rush them. You know why? Because they had a gun. And the crowd, is, for the most part, is a bunch of sad, cowardly people who aren't going to risk their individual lives to rush this family. Now, had this family gone out there waving a bat, had this family gone out there and just yelled at them, they'd wind up like every other old couple that these crowds like to beat up on. These crowds target old 
people, old women, and just beat them to death. You know, I don't understand this culture that they're from, or they think it's cool to slug it out on, on an old man. But it's true. It's, this is what that's going around. Now, what I hope happens with this couple, because now that they've been doxxed, their whole business is destroyed, their website got ruined, and I don't think he's going to be able to ever work again in this town for a while, and hopefully the crowd doesn't come back and burn their house down, but they need to seek some training. And I don't say that you have to have training, because I don't think anybody has to have any training. I don't think you should be required to do any training. If you want to go buy a gun and be like them and just put it in the closet, go for it. It's within your right. Now, if you want to learn how to use it better and you have that ultimate advantage over most people, cool. Come take training. Come seek it out. It isn't that expensive. Most classes that run a carving course are around $100. Do you have to go seek out the, the best and the brightest? No. I mean, you don't need it. I mean, most people are going to be okay. I mean, look at all the people that do have it. None of those people are coming out. <laughs> you know, how many people have all these carving level one and two courses? What are they? They're sitting at home watching TV. They're not out there helping as much. You know? So I give them credit. And I think everybody really should pat them on the back. Now, you can sit there and argue their politics and go, oh, well, you know, they're, they were helping uh, be legal support for, you know, the protesters and whatnot. Hey. Everybody has an aha moment or a light bulb clicks in, right? They didn't realize, you know, you can believe what you want to believe until something changes your mind. Now, if they still don't change their mind, I would have a hard time understanding their belief structure and their little route in the world, but to each their own. I'm not going to sit there and say, because you're a liberal, you deserve to die. I'm not going to say, because you, you know, you're a, a lawyer for people who are protesting or who are rioting that you deserve to die and have your house destroyed. I'm not going to say that. That's that's not really the whole nature of things. You know, Everybody needs legal support and legal aid. So, I mean, really, you know, it, it, it's with, within their rights. So, anyways, I really hope if you are the type of people like who fall into this category, and if you fall into this category where you've only uh, had brief training, you've only had a little bit of training here or there, go get some training. Go get some. Get comfortable with it. And also, if you had trained, and it's been to a couple years or a couple months, hey, guess what? It, it happens to me all the time. I don't shoot handgun enough, and so I shoot handgun every couple months, and it's like, whoa, you know, I'm glad I'm taking my refresher to get back to where I'm at, because, man, I am not the best handgun shooter. I'm not too bad with rifle either, but whoa. So, get some refreshing training if you're good, if you're decent. It's a very perishable skill, you know. You can even dry practice or dry fire inside your house. And I recommend that too. You know, if you don't carry a gun on you at all times, like most people I know, but practice drawing, practice drawing, aim and shoot, practice drawing, aim and shoot. You know, if you can get your gun out on somebody who's seven yards away or the whole 21 foot rule in less than a second, good. You're winning. If it takes you, and you're fumbling, and it takes you a while to get it out, okay, well, realize the problem, assess it, and then fix the problem. Corrective action. You know, if you bought a bunch of stuff for your AR, and you hung it on your AR, and you don't have it zeroed, well, there's a problem. You know, what are you going to do when your wife's being kidnapped, and uh, they're using her as a body shield? You know, I mean, these are all scenarios that are possibilities, but, I mean, let's think about it. How much effort does it take to go throw your rifle? How much effort does it take you to spend half a day, maybe even bring your kid out, or even bring someone who's new to shooting out? Zero your stuff, get it done, and then help someone out. Or if you're brand new to shooting, go ask a friend. Or go seek a class. I mean, if it's too embarrassing for you to go to a class and be like, you know what, my level of, my skill level is zero. But they're gonna go at you and go, oh, well, you know what, let's get you to skill level one, you know? Let's get you up there. You know? and, and if they're making fun of you, like other, you know, if they're making fun of you harshly to the point where it's like, oh, I never want to come back, find someone else. There's no reason to belittle someone who's new to shooting or, you know, maybe you don't have the right politics that they like. There's no reason to belittle someone because you don't like the 
fact that they're not as skilled as you. So seek someone else. I'm always willing to teach and host and help anyone out. I'm willing to help people shoot. I'm willing to help people get up to speed on things. So that's just me. So make sure that everybody has a good 4th of July weekend. Uh, with the last video that I put out, it was a little cut off. The mount I'm using again sucks, and so that's why I have this weird angle. Um, anyways, have a great day. Um, keep Just keep doing what you gotta do for winning. You know, Keep doing what we're doing. Uh, the world's getting worse at this point, and it's gonna be up to you, your friends, your family, to make it out of this. So, with that, it's Raven Daniel.